Hey guys, CJ here, back with you again, PBX How To's. We're going to start talking about how to install Communication Manager R6.x. Uh, specifically for this one, I'm showing you 6.3, but the process is exactly the same. All right, so some of the things you're going to need to prep for this, and I'm gonna show you the uh, links and everything, is uh, definitely you're gonna need um, system platform already installed, which if you click on the annotation or the description in the uh, video, you can go back and watch the video I did on installing communication manager or um, system platform. Excuse me. The next thing you're going to need is you're going to need the communication manager R6.x ISO. Uh, so whether you have the pre-printed via DVD itself or you go download it, you're good to go. You're going to need an internet browser just like you did for uh, system platform because this is how you're going to do the install, as well as set up your initial uh, settings for communication manager. You're also going to need two available IP addresses and, and specifically one for CM and the other for utility server if you're going to do that. All right. So here's the website where you can get the communication manager. Uh, the latest right now at the time of the recording of this video is um, on this website, uh, the support.ovi.com and I will put this in the description as a link. Um, but this is where you can get system platform. This is where you can get, you know, the different patches and all that good stuff. All right. So, um, again, this is a very, I don't want to use the word basic, but this is to show you how to do a fresh install of communication manager, not an upgrade. This is a fresh install just so you guys are aware. All right. So here we are at system platform. And again, go watch the system platform install video on how to install this. It's very easy. Um, but once you are in the virtual machine management, you want to click on templates. All right, once you click on templates, it's going to bring you up to a screen and you can see nothing's installed except the services VM um, and you can see no solution template is installed. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on install and it's going to bring us up a different page that allows us to select or go locate uh, different types of templates that you can install, whether it's communication manager, uh, system manager, AAM, things like that. This is where you can install them. You can install them directly from PLDS, which I highly don't recommend to do. Um, an HTTP server, uh, system platform server, the DVD CD version, which I'm doing here, and the system uh, platform USB disk, if you want to mount a USB disk, which you can do. All right, so once you do that and it finds the templates on the DVD that you have, you're going to see you have options. Those options are... Uh, duplex, the only embed, which we're going to do on this one because I have an S8300D. The simplex, which you can also do to test some things, but only do that if you're testing things because it loads it like you're loading it on a server, all right, a single server. Then there's a survivable remote embed, which makes this an LSP, uh, local survivable processor, or a survivable remote, um, again, another one, uh, which is a remote server. Or you can just install the utility server by itself if you choose to do so. Okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to select on the only embed OVF and click select. And once we do that, it's going to bring up the option to start installing uh, system, or I'm sorry, communication manager. All right. Um, so what it's going to do is going to give you, it's going to show you the two options that are part of the CM only embed, which is for S8300Ds. And those two options are going to be communication manager as well as utility. Oh, I forgot about the EPW. If you have a already pre-configured uh, EPW file for CM, you can put that in here, install it, and you're good to go. But I'm doing a continue without it because I'm going to install this fresh with no translations whatsoever. All right, but here we are where it gives me the virtual machines that it's going to install. I say OK to those and I click install and you can see the very fast spinning diamond or triangle because I actually sped up some of the parts of this video so you, you don't have to sit here and watch the install. But if you take a look at the start times, this will kind of give you an idea or gauge the idea of how much time it takes to install this. All right, But again, I sped up a lot of the different areas uh, just so we can get through this video. Um, but again, it does take some time. A little bit of time, about uh, 20, 25 minutes or something like that. Uh, but you can see once this is done, you'll see the time elapsed uh, on the left there. All right. So one thing to note, this is a very helpful tip. Make sure your pop-ups are turned or uh, enabled. Allow pop-ups because when it gets to the part where it says waiting for user complete data entry, like right here, that's going to be a pop-up. All right. So you need to have pop-ups enabled. So when you do this part, you don't miss it because it's just going to sit there and try to process and, and will not finish the update or the install. All right. 
So what it does, it shows you the system platform uh, information that you can't change here because you can go change in system platform, but it just kind of shows you what you're doing. And this allows you to put in the IP address for communication manager as well as utility server and make sure you give it a name. Make sure the host names do not have any spaces in them. Uh, you can put an underscore if you want to do a space, but don't put any spaces, okay? Just name your host names for your communication manager and utility server, and you're rocking and rolling. All right, so again, you can't change anything on system platform here. You can go do that in system platform. This is just kind of showing you it's giving you a review of what you did in system platform. So from this point, you click on next uh, or next step. And this is where you're going to give an initial login. I always suggest doing CUST01 and give it a password of CUST01 or CUSTPW1 or whatever you want. Um, but just give it, a, give it a password and a login. And this is what you're going to do your initial setup for communication manager um, when you get it finally installed. And you can use CUST01, but this is where I do my dadmin login and all that stuff. But I'll show you that later. If you're going to use utility server as a DHCP server, if you don't have one for your telephones, you can set that information here. I'm not going to do enable DHCP, but I will do a video later on DHCP using utility server because I'm going to do a whole video series on utility server later. Okay. So uh, at this point, you're going to say next step, and it's going to bring you up the options of what you picked, what you didn't pick, and you click install. All right. So when you click install, it processes it, closes that pop-up window, accepts your entry and goes through the process. Remember, this takes a little bit of time here. So get a few cups of coffee or go get breakfast or whatever. All right. But I sped it up really fast. So once you get to that point and this is fully installed, it's going to show you the process. It's going to do the final, it's going to finalize the installation as it's doing now. It's going to confirm your installation. And once it's done, you get a pop-up window. This is a little different in R6.3 uh, that it was in the earlier versions, but it's just now it's just a little window like right there. It's not a pop-up. It's just a window that says, okay, template was successfully installed. So once you are done, uh, it's going to go through and it starts all the services, as you see in the background there, and you're ready to go. So CM is installed. It's ready to do the basic installations of licenses and things like that. But uh, again, out of the box, you can set, uh, you can, you can, if you want to play with a lab environment like I do here, I don't have any licenses. I just install it and I get a 30 day working version of CM to test things with. Again, you're in no license mode. So after 30 days, it's going to stop working. Um, so you really can't back up. You can't save anything. Uh, just keep that in mind. So this is just for lab environments, but it's the same premise. So when you install your licenses, that won't happen. You won't have that issue, okay? But I'll explain that once we go in and, and do everything. But you can see now I have two more templates in my virtual machine management, and that is CM, Communication Manager, and Utility Server. And we're going to go into CM, into the web interface. This is the first thing you want to do. And you click continue, and once you're in there, you use that initial login that I used, CUS01, and whatever the password I selected, or I chose, and I enter that here. And once that's entered, it logs me into CM, the maintenance page. See, welcome, welcome to your new account. And you say continue. And at this point, it takes you to the web interface page, and we're going to select maintenance. Oh, I was just showing you that you can see the name I selected for it. We're going to roll over administration and click on server maintenance. All right. And once it takes us into there, remember this web interface is working off of uh, this S8300D as was as it would be on any other servers. But this is where I'm going to go add my accounts. I'm going to check. I'm going to select my server access and all that good stuff. But I'm going to show you that it's kind of similar as what 5.x and earlier versions was. But obviously the color scheme is different and it's a little bit faster and a little bit cleaner and things like that. But uh, once you do that, and what I did here is I, I jumped ahead a little bit. I forgot to add my dadmin account, um, and that's why it's not letting me in. And I kind of did a dull moment, and I was like, what the heck did I do? And I went and checked my login. I was like, oh, I have dadmin in here. All right, so I go back to the maintenance page, and I click on server account. Oh, I'm sorry, administrator accounts, and I tell it I want to add my dadmin account. And if you're a business partner and you want to set up your systems, you want to go ahead and add this. Or, again, if you're testing, you can do this right here as well, okay? So from here, I put in just a password. I think I just did dadmin1, I think is the password or whatever. But you can put whatever password you want, say submit. And uh, once it says successful, you're ready to go. Then I can open up 
my CM from, from Avaya Site Administration. I guess I should have told you that's something else you need. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but you need ASA to be able to get in the system, and you can see now I'm connected. All right, so there you go. Communication manager's up and running. You're able to do some things, except you can't add anything. And the reason is, is it's expecting you to install your licenses through WebLM and get all your licenses installed and all that good stuff. And then once you do that, you need to do a save translations. It's the first thing you need to do. Uh, once it's done doing its save translations, success, you want to do a reset system four. All right, once it does that, it automatically disconnects you. And then it takes a second. All the processes start back up and it takes about 10, 15 seconds-ish, 20 seconds-ish. And uh, you can start back into CM. And once you're back into CM, it allows you to do everything that you need to do based on your licensing that you installed. Or, as we're doing here as a test environment, you can do all your administration, everything that you want. Okay? So at this point, it allows me to do an ad. So that way I know everything's working and I'm able to do everything I need to do to administer my communication manager PBX. Okay? Pretty cool, huh? I told you it was easy. Uh, it is just do it a number of times, get some confidence behind you, and it's, again, it's very easy to do. Same process for installing a, uh, you know, an LSP and all that good stuff. But uh, anyway, so here's Utility Server. Utility Server uses this, the logins from System Platform, just an FYI. So we're going to log into that. It's going to say, hey, welcome to your new account. As you can see, the name of the server I put there, as we did in the installation portion of it, that's how you can tell which server you're in. The same color scheme as everything else. A system platform, CM, AAM, all that good stuff. They're all there. But again, similar interface as the maintenance page from CM, but it it is related directly towards utility server. And again, I'll have different videos on utility server, so don't worry about that now. But there you go. That's really it, guys. You're rocking and rolling. Your server is running utility server. Your server is running CM, and it's running system platform. Specifically, this one is an S8300D on a G350 that I have, and it's running beautifully. I can install IP telephones. I can install DCP telephones as long as I have cards <laughs> and, uh, you know, all that good stuff. But that's it. All right. If you guys have any questions, comments, anything you need, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to hit that like button, and I'll talk to you all later. Thanks for watching. See ya.